People love taking photos of the moon. There's nothing easier. Like sunsets or the photo of your breakfast on Instagram. People just love a good moon photo. You know who doesn't like the moon? Astronomers. Most astronomers find the moon really, really annoying because it's super huge and bright and just washes out everything in the sky. Even research grade astronomy, it washes out those faint things that we're trying to discover like asteroids and comets and things like that. So not a lot of great work gets done when the full moon is out or any kind of moon that's washing out your images with light. But what are you gonna do when the only clear day in the last 30 days has been a moon one? It's a huge irony. The first A-pod I got was a photo of the moon with Earth shine. And I actually have a photo being exhibited for the Apollo anniversary this year in New York, which you should totally go check out. So I'm kind of getting known for moon photography, even though I totally love the moon. So I'm gonna show you how to take a high dynamic range photo of the moon. There's lots of different ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you one little technique that I use. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Okay, so there's a point in the moon's phases where the moon is chasing the sunset. You see the sun go down and after it there is a crescent moon. And because one side of the moon is being lit by the sun, the other side is typically in darkness. It's a side we don't normally see. But the sunlight is reflecting off the Earth's ocean and back onto the dark side of the moon, allowing us to see the whole moon where we normally wouldn't. This effect is easily captured with your eyes because we have a high dynamic range, even though our eyes are pathetic and noisy. But with a camera, you need to take two exposures. And that means exposing for the bright side so that you don't wash out the surface detail, and also exposing for the dark side, which completely blows out the bright side. So I'm gonna show you how I take an exposure for each and then merge them together with a layer mask to make a really nice, very 3D looking photo of the moon. Okay, so last night in the observatory, I connected my Celestron 9 and a quarter uh, at f10 to my DSLR camera. So the DSLR camera hangs off the back of the cell. There's no diagonal or anything like that. You just put it straight in with the adapter and the T adapter to the to the rear of the cell. And I just clicked off a bunch of photos. You can see with these ones that I've gone for exposing the dark side so here I've got it super super bright it's totally blown out you've got no detail here at all um, and then I also have a bunch where I've taken it and I've paid attention to expose to the sunshine side of the moon um, now the one I ended up picking was this one and I've already made some adjustments here in camera raw so if I open up these two oh, and this was the bright one I chose and I've added a bunch of saturation to get the glow. So you've got a bit of an orange tint here over the atmospheric horizon. And here you can see more of the color on the moon as well. And I, re I really think that color is something that you should include on, on the moon. You see these very monochromatic versions of the moon and the color's there. All you have to do is just drag the slider up as long as um, it's not too noisy. So you can see for this one on the bright side, I'm using ISO 400 and I've got a two and a half second exposure. So it's quite long. So you want to make sure that you're tracking nicely so that you don't smudge out or blur out the moon. And the, um, and the normal regular crescent version of the moon where I'm getting the surface detail on the bright side, uh, that's this one I've bumped up the ISO to 800 because I wanted a quick shot. So one eight hundred one eight hundredth of a second. So we get that nice crisp detail without it smudging too much with the movement of the mount or the tracking or anything like that. Um, so I picked these two very nice exposures. So I'll open them in camera raw now. And this is where I would make my modifications. So this is where I've dragged that saturation slider all the way up to the end. And I've also um, made sure that the highlights and the shadows are good. Now I pulled the shadows up here because I wanted to get more of that detail on the earthshine side. And on this one here, uh, I've pulled the highlights down a little bit. I've pulled the whites up just to make it a little brighter around the limb. 
and I pulled the saturation all the way up and the vibrance as well. So now that we've got our two images here, I'm going to open them. Okay, so I'm opening those two images in Photoshop now, and my computer is struggling with the screen recording and the all the programs I've got open. Okay, so we've got our two images here. Now they're not perfectly lined up, so what I'm going to do is dump one on top of the other. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it, but I'm going to do this bright one. Select all there and copy. And now I'm just going to dump it on top of this one with paste. And my screen capture software died, so I've got to do it again. <laughs> Here's where we are up to. I've just pasted the layer on and because they're not lined up I'm going to change the blending mode here not the blending mode I'm going to change the opacity so that we can line it up with the move tool and I'll just fiddle around and you can use the cursor keys as well so a good tip here is I can see some shadows on these craters so I'm just gonna hit V so I'm in the move tool and use my arrow keys on the keyboard to pull those crater shadows up so that they match then we'll know we're in the right location there we go now it does look like that the limb extends off and that that's not lined up but it's actually just because it's overexposed on that um, really bright photo so that is actually lined up so I'm just going to change that opacity to 100% now great now I'm going to put the layer mask, so new layer mask on this top layer and I'm going to use a gradient and I'm going to hold down shift so it's a straight line and pull a gradient and just see what happens. And that's pretty good but it's still a bit hazy on this side so we actually want, want it to start maybe around there. So I'll just play around with this gradient a little bit until I get something I like. Uh, maybe make it a bit more smooth. That's pretty good and now I'm going to change the geometry of this just to make it a bit more photogenic. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to crop in now. And the final thing left to do is just a bit of noise reduction. So I would do a bit of noise reduction individually on each of these layers. So instead of flattening, uh, I will reduce the noise on each layer. But before I do that, I'm going to resize. Normally you'd save this off, but I'm just going to resize this to 2048, which is a nice optimize size for social media and then apply some gentle denoise on each side. Okay, that's way too much detail lost there so I'm going to pull this back to about three. We can still see some crater detail there in the earthshine side which is good. And then I'll do the same for the other layer. But I'll be a bit heavier on the noise reduction here. So I'll pull this up to about 12. And that's it. Now you're ready to save off that photo. I think that's a pretty good looking photo of the moon. For, you know, the moon. Hope you enjoyed that video. I hope to do something a bit more deep space related soon. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.